If you have tried to learn Rush's iconic song Tom Sawyer by ear, you're probably playing it all wrong. I did for many years. I assumed that it was just power chords, like an E power chord, where I can open the first two strings for a, for a thicker voicing. And then I thought it was a D power chord, same principle, and then an A power chord, and a C power chord. But if you're playing it like this, you're playing it all wrong. How do I know the source itself? Mr. Alex Lifeson is teaching how to play Tom Sawyer as he wrote it and played it. And it's on YouTube. I'm gonna give you the link in the description below. And I was just really, really fascinated by all the chords that I got wrong. So I'm gonna teach you the real way to play the chords of this song. So the first chord is not an E power chord, it's an E major. So he plays it like this by barring with his pinky. So to me it was not logical, I thought that it was at least a neutral chord, like this, or it should have been an E minor chord. Why? Because the song really feels like it's in the key of E minor. You have E, D, A and C. And it's all notes in the key of E minor, right? So it really seems like e, an E minor key. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna play a neutral chord just to be safe, but it's actually an E major. And we call that a Picardy chord. It's when you play a major root chord in a minor key. And then the second chord is played like this. So it really doesn't make sense on paper to look at this chord. It's like an E dominant seven, sus four, right? So if we played E major, and the, a root chord in major is usually major seven. But now he's playing a chord that's the equivalent of a dominant chord on the same chord. So it doesn't make sense on paper, but uh, Alex Lifeson himself in the lesson says, I wish I could tell you what this chord is, but I just don't know the name of this chord. And I think it's a great lesson in and of itself to say like, if it sounds good to you, it is good. It's no matter if you can label the chord or not. So he thought it sounded good. And it is good because of that, but it doesn't tell us why it's the, gr the right voicing for it, right? Because I really hear in my head, like a D chord, not an E chord, not an E sus four chord. It's because Geddy Lee on the bass is playing the D bass note. So we have this on top of, so it creates a super uh, extended chord, like a beautiful extension. So it's gonna make a D sus two chord on a bass of E on guitar, but it's truly on a bass of D in reality, right? So it's really hard to uh, really distinguish what is uh, the guitar part and what is the bass part. Like our ears latch on to the lowest note and that's why I thought it was a D chord but it's in fact this chord right here. So let's go to the third chord. I thought it was just an A power chord, but it's an A like this. So it's an A dominant seven sus four or A minor seven sus four, it could be both. Because of this sus four, we don't know. So you might have missed those little colors on top. And it's usually a chord that we're gonna use to modulate elsewhere, or at least to resolve some tension. Like a sus4 has a lot of tension in it, so usually we're gonna use it like this. Like it's a really good chord to modulate to the key of D major, for example. But Lyson is just using it super assumed like this without resolving it. It's just an extra color in the song, right? And then the fourth chord is the same as the second. It's here. So it's the same then here, but just two frets down. And it's the same principle on bass. Uh, Getty Lee is gonna play the C. So, so we have. 
So it's gonna make a C sus2 on a base of D4 guitar, but it's truly on a base of C, right? So you got. So alone on guitar, it sounds like it's wrong, but with the bass and with the entire song, it's the right voicings because they come from Alex Lifeson himself. And then he's, he's adding little flourishes that you probably have never heard. So the second time or the third time, I don't remember, they go. So he's gonna take the D shape right here, slide it two frets higher, so it's D, D sharp, E. So it's still an E major chord. And he's gonna add the, the sus4, right? And then he's gonna do... Right, really interesting voicing right here. So he just take this voicing and he swaps the index and the pinky of places and it makes this collar right here. To me, it sounds more like an A minor six which shouldn't fit normally at this place, but it's just cool though. And then he does. So he's gonna do the movement three, two, one on the first string by keeping the same A sus four chord. And then we're going And then with a little riff. And I thought that in the chorus also it was a B power chord, but it's much more than it, than it's, he's playing it like this. Like super big voicing, so it's a B sus2 on the bass of F sharp. You have the at the bottom to thicken the chord right here. And then I thought it was A and G, but it's actually A. An A on a base of G, so you just add the G at the bottom of the A. So it's really hard sometimes because like I said, you try to pick it up by ear, but you hear the lowest note on the bass and you assume that the lowest note has to be the same one on guitar, but that's actually something that Lifeson is doing all the time. The lowest note of the chords on guitar are not always the root note of the chord. So that's the case here. That's the case with that chord here and with many others he's playing. So I think the morals of this lesson right here is that first of all, if you like the sound of a chord, it is good. You don't have to label it. This is fascinating that uh, Lifeson is like teaching the song and he doesn't even know the name of the chords. It's because it doesn't matter. If you only play chords that you know and that you are able to label, and then you're not gonna innovate. You're just gonna play the same chords over and over again. And Rush have been innovating for many decades because they've been using chords that they just don't know what they are, but it's the first time that any band has used them in this way, right? That's why we love their music. So uh, if you want to go further with me and you like this lesson and you wanna break out of open chords and power chords, I have a free course for you on my website. You can get it first link in the description box. It's a crash course on spread triad chords. It's the first course that re I really teach my students when they wanna break out of open chords and power chords and in the course you have almost one hour of video lessons you have muting techniques that you can learn you can download the chord charts and the exercises it's entirely for free it's my gift to you for watching my lesson until the end so you can get it first link in the description box and now go play Tom Sawyer with the right chord voicings hope you enjoyed until next time au revoir